Hi guys, in this video we'll be talking about the function of the nervous system, the structure of the nervous system, and finally a summary. The nervous system is one of the most important systems in our body. In this video I'll be discussing the function of the nervous system and the structure of the nervous system. So why do we need a nervous system? Well, we have a nervous system because organisms can respond to stimuli, and stimuli just means changes in the environment. So for example, this could be changes in temperature. So if it's too hot, your body might not be able to cope, and so your body then sweats. For instance, if the temperature is too high, this could be bad for your body, and so the body reacts by sweating, cooling your body down. Another example is at the start of an exam. So your body produces something called adrenaline and that helps you focus better on the exam. So in order to respond to these stimuli and react to these changes, multicellular organisms need communication between cells, tissues, organs and systems. So let's talk about some of the roles of the human nervous system. Well, the human nervous system receives information from its surroundings it detects a stimulus or a change in the environment. It then processes this information and triggers an appropriate response. For instance, if you're too cold, your body starts to shiver. It also communicates with itself, and this is to coordinate responses. That means if there's lots of different responses, the body can do this all at once. So our bodies have something called neurons, and this is just a simplified diagram of what a neuron looks like. Neurons are also called nerve cells, and these neurons or nerve cells make up the nervous system. So when we talk about nerves, we just mean a bundle of neurons. So this is a diagram of a nerve, and this is a bundle of neurons. So this means that neurons make up nerves. So what happens in these nerves? Well, information is sent along the neurons as electrical impulses or signals and that allows the body to make the appropriate responses to the change in the environment. So now we know how important the nervous system is. Now let's talk about the structure of the nervous system and how the structure enables it to fulfill its job. In the nervous system, information is transmitted from the stimulus. And remember, a stimulus is just a change in the environment. The information is transmitted to the receptor, and the receptor are cells that detect the stimuli. This is then transferred to the coordinator, and the coordinator includes the brain and the spinal cord, or something that makes up the CNS, the central nervous system. This information is then transferred to the effector, and the effectors include muscles and glands. This means after the effector gets this information, the effector produces a response. There are specific nerves that transmit information from the receptor to the coordinator, and these are called sensory neurons. The relay neurons transmit information from the sensory neuron to the motor neuron, and these are in the coordinator. The motor neuron transfers information from the coordinator to the effector. Don't worry if this looks really complicated. I'm going to go through all of these things in detail. All you need to know so far is that information is transported all over your body through the nervous system. So let's talk about receptors. Well, receptors are what detect stimuli and they're found in the sense organs. These sense organs include the eyes, the tongue, the nose, and the skin. So all these scent organs contain different types of receptor cells, which detect different stimuli. And let's look at some examples now. Well, the light receptors in the retina of the eye detect light stimuli. There are also taste receptors in the tongue, which detect chemical stimuli. This is what allows you to taste something that's sweet or salty. And the green dots here represent the receptors in your tongue. There are also pressure and temperature receptors in our skin, and that detects pressure and heat respectively. There are also pain receptors, and that detects excess pressure or heat. These are the things that will detect if you touch something like a hot pan. We also have olfactory, or smell receptors, and taste receptors in the nose, and these detect chemical stimuli. 
For instance, the nose would detect molecules of perfume and how they smell. So all of these receptors change signals from the environment, or stimuli, into electrical signals. And these travel along neurons to the central nervous system, or CNS. So after your nose detects a perfume, this information would be carried along through neurons to the central nervous system. So the central nervous system is also another name for the coordinator. In vertebrates, which are animals with a backbone, the CNS consists of the brain and the spinal cord. And both of these are really important in coordinating our responses to the stimuli. Now I talked briefly about sensory neurons. Now I'm going to go through what they are. Well, they carry information from receptors in the sense organs, such as the nose or the tongue, as electrical impulses. And these are carried to the central nervous system, or CNS. So when we smell something, this information is transported through sensory neurons. And this is then carried to the CNS. Now let's talk about relay neurons. So relay neurons are only found in the CNS and their job is to carry electrical impulses from the sensory neurons to the motor neurons. So this diagram shows a sensory neuron. These carry information to the relay neurons. And remember, the relay neurons are only found in the CNS. So these relay neurons transfer the information to the motor neurons. So what are motor neurons? Well, motor neurons carry the electrical impulses from the CNS and these go to the effectors and coordinate responses. So remember, effectors are things like muscles or glands, and the responses could include things like a prey running away from a predator. So information from the CNS is carried to the motor neurons, which are depicted here. These motor neurons carry information to the effectors, in this case, a muscle. The effector then produces a response. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing GCC biology and combined science resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make biology at GCSE a walk in the park.